Hi students, welcome to Preliminary Chemistry and the Chemical Earth. This is the second in the series of Chemical Earth videos called Separating Substances. So in the last one we had a little bit of a look at particle theory and got a sense of the different types of matter, elements, compounds and mixtures. In this one we're going to look specifically at mixtures and have a look at some of the different ways that we can separate the different components of mixtures. Again, this is probably something that you did in your um, junior science years, but it's a, it's a good starting point to enable us to just recall some of those key chemical processes and physical processes and to start that whole process of, of looking more deeply at um, chemistry. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at the fact that the separation of mixtures involves an understanding of their physical and their chemical characteristics. While most separation methods do actually um, tie into their physical characteristics, uh, it's very important to understand the chemical basis of these particles as well. Because um, there are different components in each of the different types of mixtures, different separation methods need to be used. And which one we choose is going to depend very much on the nature of the particles, and hence that is why we had a look at that in our first uh, video. So the first thing we might need to do is to separate solids. Now this can very easily be done if the two solids are of a different size because you can use something like sieving um, with uh, nets. Um, it's kind of filter I guess in a way that um, allows certain particles of a certain size to pass through and other particles that are too large uh, get caught within the net or the sieve. Um, varying sizes can be used to um, separate different sized particles. But sometimes one of the other properties of one of the solids can actually make it easier for us to separate those solids. So one of those important properties is magnetism. Certain types of solids are magnetic and therefore um, a magnetic pulley like the one that you can see in the diagram here um, can actually be used by drawing out those substances which are magnetic, which are retained by the pulley just a little bit longer until they fall under gravity, whereas most of the other material that is not magnetic um, falls away earlier. So just one little way of separating solids. If we have solids and liquids, then there are a couple of methods depending on whether or not the solid is um, soluble in the liquid or not. If the solid is not soluble, if it's a precipitate, for example, then the method that we choose is filtration. You've carried out filtrations, I'm sure, where we use a um, filter funnel and filter paper as we have here and the mixture is going to be poured into the filter funnel and then we have two important terms that we need to be aware of the residue which is the solid that's actually going to collect in the filter funnel in fact it's right here at the base of the filter funnel and obviously increases the uh, process continues and also the filtrate which is actually the liquid component that drips through. If the solid is soluble and dissolves in the water um, or in the solution, then we have to pick a different method. Filtration won't work, so we need evaporation. And evaporation is based on differences in boiling point. The assumption that we make is that the boiling point of water is lower and therefore will reach the boiling point of water earlier than we will the solid. So therefore, the water will evaporate, will be removed from this particular solution, uh, and it will leave the again residue behind um, in the evaporating basin. I obviously sometimes need to control this because as it gets close to the end some of that solid starts to spit out. We do need to be uh, aware uh, of that when we're controlling these kinds of experiments but I'm sure um, you'll see that when we do one in class. Now if the liquids are miscible, um, so this is now we're moving on to a combination of two liquids um, in one another. If that miscible just means that they will mix together, okay? Um, so we can have a solution of alcohol in water, these two things do mix together. Oil and water on the other hand are immiscible and we can usually separate those with something like a separating funnel because one of the liquids will sit on top of the other, usually differences in uh, their density and as a result you can just pour one off or extract one from the separating funnel and leave the other one behind. But if they do mix, they are miscible liquids, then we have to go to a method like distillation. Distillation again is a process you've probably seen before with a Liebig condenser sitting on its side. Oops, let's make that blue. Let's try again, make it blue. Liebig condenser. Um, and so in this case, it's salt water, but it could be 
is just as easily a mixture of alcohol and water. The point here is that the difference, that we're basing this on the difference in the boiling points. One must boil before the other, and we need to make sure that we keep the temperature between the two boiling points. So one which is high enough for one of those liquids to boil, but not so high that the second one boils as well. And that means we can separate our two substances into two different containers. Finally, we may actually have gases that we need to separate. And the best method to do this is the method of chromatography. Now you've probably done this with textures, separating the different colors in textures, textures or possibly even with pigments from uh, the leaves of a plant. But we can do this with gases as well. And this is again something that's based on differences in particle size which is kind of the way filtration works. But the difference in this case is what we do is we allow them to move through a particular medium, often as a result of a current passing through the medium, which may slightly change um, the charge on the different particles. The bottom line is that the lighter molecules will travel further than the heavier ones, and hence we'll get a separation. You can see from this mixture at the beginning, we end up with them being separated into quite discrete little bundles, which we can then um, draw off at the end or once we're finished. These are some of the different methods that we use to separate different types of mixtures and you'll see probably most if not all of these methods in class. Thanks for watching.